Welcome to the Engineerable Channel. I'm going to show you the easiest way to make the best helping hands that you can't buy. For all my past life, I've put up with using the terrible helping hands that I'm certain you've also been tortured with. I tried the flex arm solutions that are a little bit better, but still not great. These super simple helping hands made using off-the-shelf parts are amazing. I can't believe that I didn't do this sooner. I use a mini dial indicator arm with a magnetic base and an alligator clip. The best part is that you can make as many as you need of these. Let's get into it and see how it's made. The absolute simplest connection that can be made to this dial indicator holder is just to take some clips and crush the ends down. These are already partially crushed, but I can crush them down even more like this. That's completely flat. That's going to lose its rigidity when you do that, but then you can take it, slide it in here in this clamp, and you could cut out a little bit, snip out a little bit of a circle in there, and get some more purchase area. But if we slide it in that slot and tighten this down, I would recommend that you snip a little bit out here. So if you cut and grind a notch to fit around this screw, then it gets a lot better engagement in there. <coughs> so this alligator clip is now held in really well in there. It's pretty strong. Now that was probably the simplest way possible to add alligator clips to these dial indicator mini test stands. There are many other ways you could do this including 3D printing some adapters either for this hole here or for the dial indicator dovetail here. But in this video I wanted to show you a way that was super simple that anyone could do with some basic cutters or a handsaw and a file. So for your final setup for using these you can do a lot of different things. Since these bases are magnetic they'll attach to any steel magnetic surface and you can actually just attach them to themselves too. You position them against themselves and turn the magnets on. It wants to, interestingly enough, turn the other, other magnet on on the other side too. And then you have a fairly stable, heavy base. Now you can improve the stability by making it like this angle and giving it a bit more stability. You can also join them like this. If you join them like this, the base is quite stable, and then you can position your clamps however you want to hold on to wires or circuit board. This is a lot better than the old style helping hands. So if you just loosely tighten these arms, then you can easily move things around without having to change the tightness. For example, if I wanted to try to solder these two wire ends together, you can very easily get those into position. And if I wanted to make it tighter, I could tighten those up a little bit. It seems to hold just fine without making it any tighter than this. And then you can go ahead and solder your wires together. And then if you have a metal surface like this piece of stainless or something smaller than this, doesn't have to be this big, you can attach your bases to this. And this is a piece of magnetic stainless. It's made for mounting on walls to put magnetic stuff on. So these magnets do attach to here. They're not quite as strong as they would if it was a piece of plain steel. But then this allows you to put your helping hand clamps in any position you want. You can place them wherever you want on this surface so you have a lot of flexibility in where you can position stuff to help you hold stuff together. Not only that, but if you're working in a metal enclosure, you can use this helping hand to attach to the metal enclosure 
and then use it to hold on to a tool or whatever.